Mummies are not uncommon anywhere in the world. But there's a far rarer practice, as you might imagine, that is called self-mummification. It's an extremely unpleasant experience, attempted only by the most devoted of religious followers. Described as rather gruesome and excruciating, one might wonder why go through all that trouble just to turn yourself into particularly well-preserved corpse. Many religions, including Christianity, have viewed the incorruptibility of the corpse as a sign of special grace or supernatural ability. There have been many accounts of highly spiritual individuals dying during prayer or meditation and failing to decay after several days. A successful act of self-mummification meant the successful execution of the final spiritual practice. It would take much meditation and prayer and determination on the part of the monk to decide if this was the path he wished to take. He had to weigh the ramifications and possibilities. For after an attempt at self-mummification, the attempted practitioner was found decayed. It was taken as a sign that the spiritual goal had not been achieved. Taoist practitioners of self-mummification saw the practice not as suicide but as a path to immortality and similarly other monks saw the process of transcendence rather than death. It was considered a selfless act as they would remain in their mummified state, which was viewed as a death-like trance for 5.67 billion years until they would be called upon to cease for the benefit of all mankind. Deciding to mummify oneself is not a thing that can be done at the spur of the moment. In fact, there is a 3,000 day or 8 year training process for turning an ordinary person's body into a mummy. The key element of the process is dietary. To commonly abstain from cereals, removing wheat, rice, and so forth. Instead, they would eat things like nuts, berries, pine needles, tree bark, and resin. The whole diet became known as tree eating. And over time, the diet would become even more restrictive, starving the body of nutrients and eliminating the fat and moisture that could encourage bodily decay after death. X-rays have even shown that river stones have been found in the guts of mummies. It's been suggested that beyond the weight loss, some aspects of the diet may have helped with the preservation of the body after death. For example, certain herbs and toxic cyad nuts may have inhibited bacterial growth. At least some of the monks are said to have drunk a tea made from Yurushi, the sap of a toxic tree. It is typically used to make lacquer. 
in addition to facilitating vomiting. The urushi may have functioned as a sort of embalming fluid, rendering the body toxic to potential flesh-eating invaders. If a man committed himself to the diet and the task, and failed to complete it, he would often gouge his own eyes out. Once the monk was prepared to attempt to become a Soku Dubutsu, it said he would step into a tiny barrel chamber and have himself buried alive, with a small opening to allow air inside the chamber. The barrel was then lowered and enclosed inside a concrete container. It was here he would sit, chanting sutra and ringing a bell to signal that he was still alive. Once the bell stopped ringing, the chamber would be completely sealed, and after three years, it would be opened again to see if the attempt at self-mummification proved successful. People are thought to have attempted this form of self-mummification, but it's not known how many were actually successful. However, we do have some examples still today. Famously, Daijuku Batsatsu Sinyoka Shogun was mummified himself at the age of 96 in 1783. If, when your burial chamber was opened, your body was found preserved, then you could be worshipped as a Sokushin Butsu. You would be dressed in robes and placed in a shrine where humanity could await your reawakening. And if your body was found rotting when the tomb was opened, then there would be no worship for your remains. An exorcism would be performed and the remains would be reburied. All those years of self-starvation and sacrifice, those final days spent alone in a dark chamber, and your remains become an object of caution rather than worship.